This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by State Farm, who has surprisingly great rates for your auto insurance. In 1999, my mom recorded me in our family room, delivering the lines for what I thought was a horror movie. My mom read the other roles, and I thought she gave a much better performance than I did. There was even a moment when I seriously considered not sending the tape because that would require a trip to the post office and an entire day's salary for postage. Not that I had a paying job. I was surprised when I received a phone call asking if I could audition in person. Then I realized that the casting director must have mixed up my tape with someone else's. I could have pointed out the error, but I'd never been to LA and wanted to go. So my parents gave me airline miles and I flew to Los Angeles, Burbank actually, where I auditioned every day for a week and slept on three different couches. At the week's end, my friend with the least comfortable couch offered to drive me to the airport. And because at the time it was hard to find good Mexican food in Washington state, I wanted one last burrito. My pager began buzzing just as our nachos arrived. There was a payphone in the back of the restaurant, and when I returned the page, I was told that I got the role. It was one of the biggest surprises of my life. I was also surprised to learn that Scary Movie was actually a comedy. This was after my audition. Speaking of nice surprises, State Farm provides coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Uh, we're recording this a little bit in advance right now. Hopefully, I have a baby by now. I should have a baby right now. I don't know if I do because we're recording this a little bit in advance. Well, you prefaced it by saying hopefully. And in my head, I'm thinking about those first early weeks. And I just wouldn't have said it that way. Well, I should have a baby by now. This is two weeks from... Two weeks from now? You yes. should have a baby yes. by now. There, <laughs> yes. There, you there should have a baby, baby by now. Um, That's my wife, Amy, right there. Hopefully... I just think that sort of conveys optimism in the sense that like, oh, your life will be better once the baby comes. What do you think? Will my life be better once the baby comes? Oh, man. I think you're going to be pretty tired in two weeks from today. Yeah. What's your Ambien prescription like? I don't have one. Well. Can I borrow? No. I can't. I can't betray Amy. She's going to be up all night. She's going to be true. kicking yeah, exactly. you. Exactly. No, yeah, Ambien. Yeah. Yeah. no Ambien. Oh, man. Day. Kick him in the kidney. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for some feedback? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, since we couldn't get feedback from the Kevin Smith episode because we're recording this in advance, I'm going to read the feedback from the second call from the Constance episode. Caller Amy, and she needed advice regarding her tattoos and the fact that she smokes weed. We told her we told her oh, not right, to right, talk right, about right, the weed right. part, and but for her worried. tattoos, yeah, yeah. We, we gave her some pretty solid advice. Uh, well, at least you did. I don't know if I did. I, I anyway, think you did. I think on. you did. Well, uh, Jacqueline from... Western Australia. We have listeners in Australia as well. Oh, I love Australia. She wrote, Hi, gorgeous humans. Oh, I, I like love that. her even more. I, like that. I felt compelled to write regarding Amy's question for advice about hiding her tattoos. I have been there and my brother has as well. He successfully hid a full leg sleeve from my parents for around two years, which meant many uncomfortable visits over Australian summers in long pants. When I got my first tattoos, my mom cried. She was so disappointed It felt like I was vandalizing something she made. I can understand the resistance of a parent of that generation to their kids growing up, but it did hurt a little. Over time, I gently let my mom know the meanings behind my tattoos and also that they didn't change the person I am inside. She would say, they will be there forever. And I told her that fact is pretty awesome as we can't take anything with us in the end anyhow. Our bodies are not what make us who we are. It does take time, but she eventually got excited for me for new ones. And this year, I took her along when I got a tiny little one in her honor. In her honor, wow. And she cried for a different reason. That's so great. You got this girl. It may be hard at first. You are always going to be her baby. Love you, Anna, and congrats, Sim and Amy. Oh, And that is from Jacqueline. Thanks, Jacqueline. I love you, and I love your, I love Australia. Thank you so much. Wouldn't That's you, I would really love to wise. go to Australia with you and do a live show sometime. Fuck yeah. We have listeners in England as well. I get I lots of it. listeners in England and Australia. Uh, I love it. And Thank now you. let's get to Yvette Nicole Brown. Mm-hmm. 
This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by The Pill Club. Do you need to renew your birth control prescription? Want to switch your birth control? Maybe try it for the first time. Whether you know the brand you want or you're looking for help finding the best option, The Pill Club medical team has your back. With The Pill Club, you'll never have to make a trip to the doctor or wait in line at the pharmacy. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by a medical professional and delivered straight to your door for free in discreet packaging. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA-approved brands. Most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start as low as $7 per month without insurance. Right now, when you go to thepillclub.com slash unqualified, the Pill Club is offering a $10 donation to bedsider.org for every unqualified listener who becomes a patient. Your donation will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org. That's thepillclub.com slash unqualified to get your first birth control care package. That's thepillclub.com slash unqualified to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control. Remember, thepillclub.com slash unqualified. You must use the link to make a donation. She was so cute. This episode is brought to you in part by Plant Botanical. As everyone slowly comes out of hiding, many of you are asking the same questions. Am I ready for actual human contact? Should I swipe right? Will they look like their picture? Do I look like my picture? Is that the face of an ax murderer? Do I really wanna take off these sweats? And for those of you who get that far, what drink should I be casually sipping? I have the answer to that one. While your date sits awkwardly silent, stunned by your good looks, dazzled by your intellect, or wondering how to dispose of your body, the drink in your hand should be delicious, refreshing, crisp, clean, plant botanical vodka seltzer. Weighing in at only one carb, made with real fruit and botanicals traditionally used for stamina, immunity, and detox, Plant Botanical is already thinking about your future encounters. Follow and DM at Plant Loves You and share a story or video of your funniest, wildest, or most awkward date for a chance to win up to $1,000 for your next one. Plant Botanical, your perfect companion while you look for your perfect companion. Available at Target, Pavilions, Vons, Total Wine, or visit plantlovesyou.com to find a store near you. Plant Vodka and Vodka Seltzer. Just the good shit. We're so excited to have you. I'm excited to be I know. here. Thank you so much. Listen, I've been like waiting for the call. I've been I'm like, well, maybe I just need to be a little sweeter. And I just need to work on who I am as a person. And then maybe the that's invite right. will come. The last season I was like, oh, that's a fucking bitch. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm so unqualified. <laughs> you like that? See, yeah, like, yeah. I'm so unqualified. Nope, and I, maybe I'm a little more, you're talking to the a little team, less yeah. unqualified. Wait, year. can we say the beginning? You're, so you're going to be on Mom this season, right? I am. I'm going to be I'm gonna be popping in again. I did a three episodes last season. Are we, have we started? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's on. It's happening, everybody. It's happening. Um, I did three episodes last year and um, just was so happy to get the call because I was uh, talking about under. I was underemployed. <laughs> unemployed, underemployed. So it was nice. But aren't we all as actors? I kind of feel that way all the time. Like you just, I don't know any actor that actually feels like they've made it enough where they never have to worry about work again. We always are always a little like, oh God, I don't know. This pilot didn't get picked up. Well, it's over. Well, that's the thing. You know, like when you're young, like when I got Scary Movie, there, yeah. I had flashes. They were brief yeah. and naive and arrogant. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, okay, I've crossed the finish line. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, no, no. No, there's, there's no finish line. Time, like, I realize there's just none. And, you know, I'm staring into the, you know, playing the mom roles and stuff now, which is fine. Like, I've, I've accepted where I am in my career. But it's like, I kind of want to get a couple of good things in before I'm just a woman in the kitchen going, eat your jello. You want to you be having some hot sex? I mean, maybe. That might be nice. Yeah. I don't know on screen if that's nice. I don't know if anybody wants to see that. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, just something like just have an actual shot at it. I don't feel like I've really had a shot yet. It is that constant degree of anxiety with mm. with being unemployed constantly. Yeah, yeah. And hustling. Right. And then this this perception that 
we're all like in these multi mansions, you know, having lunch with Will Smith. And, and it's great if you can get there. But even if you get there, you're not staying there the whole time. Well, like and just... he likes Caesar salad without the dressing, <laughs> which I so never understood. No, fine, no. <laughs> but you know what I mean? The perception back home, people back home is that as soon as you make it on TV, like you're rolling in money and you're making it. And it's if you save your money, you can do all right. Like I'm a really good saver. But at the same time, it's like I'm not living the high life i'm i'm having to scrap together to get everything i get just like everybody else and it is that yeah that that constant level of anxiety mm-hmm. it's like when okay so when this job's gonna end then i gotta go yeah. get the new one and i think it would be unfair to say that it's sort of like just a female issue because it's for everybody but it is for women and also for people of color it is a little bit tougher for us as we go through this and i think that's why we have to generate our own shit we right do. like we do. And, and and that's what has been a nice shift, I think, in the industry mm-hmm. a little bit. If there is a silver lining about that, it does feel like there's more avenues. So to, many lanes. Like you just pick your lane and just get in it and, and rock it. Yvette, and we don't have to talk too much about this okay. if you're not comfortable. Yeah. But we were talking earlier in between scenes about balancing being a working woman mm-hmm. and relationships. Yeah, we can talk about it. And, and, you know, I haven't known anything but this particular industry. In fact, I couldn't do any, I mean, I'm already unqualified to do this podcast. I'm unqualified to do everything, <laughs> but I, I like, I barely know how to, t- I, I, I truly, I, 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 I would have no idea how to, m- to make a living. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I could show my breasts somehow. You, I mean, listen, people do it and make a lot of money. I know, but I'm 41. Doesn't matter. They're perky. Okay, well. <laughs> I haven't seen them, everybody. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, she's tiny and I, they're perfect. I would love, so, to, I'd love to show them. I'm just, just listen, very, she'll show me later very, and I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll confirm. I'll confirm, everybody. She's but, turning red. <laughs> but it's difficult. And we were talking a little bit about, is it like the hours that we work? Is right. it like being a woman? Is it uh, the constant instability? Like having to prioritize your right. career above kind of all things because you don't know when right. you're going to work again. And how just how difficult I I am not a uh, expert in relationships at all. I've really bombed all of them that I've been in, and it hasn't even been a lot. So it's, I don't even get a lot of at bats, and I'm just literally just not striking out, not striking, not hitting. What Are is you it? usually? Run, I don't know sports. <laughs> I'm striking out is what I'm trying to say. Um, what was your question? Are you usually the one who breaks up with a man? I realize that or- I am. <laughs> I didn't think I was, but I realize I am, and the reason I think that I am is I give 110% in every area of my life to everyone. Right. So if I have given 110% and you're still terribly unhappy, then sir, I'm going to set you free because you deserve better. You know what I'm saying? Like I can only, you cannot make an unhappy person happy. Another person just can't do that. I literally, the, 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 my ex-boyfriend I just broke up with, I literally said to him, I feel like I, I, you don't like me. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I really make you very unhappy and I don't want that for you because I love you and I want you to be happy and you deserve to be happy. And if I don't make you happy, then gosh, you deserve better. Like, please, you know, and, and this is me coming from the place of, I literally have done everything I can. Like I've, I've sh- tried to show you in every way I can that I adore you and I'm here for you. But if it still upsets you for some reason, I, what a, I, I, I can't. And also it. like that, you know, well, I have a couple of thoughts like yeah. and I've talked about this in the podcast a little bit. I, I remember breaking up with somebody because for me, um, usually it's like my hand being forced a little bit. Oh, because like, they're acting up. They're being a little. Yeah. Crappy. And I remember like my one of my first breakups. It felt it truly. I described it to my friends as like somebody taking like a 200 pound backpack off my back when it, the, was, when it was over. Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I've been trying really hard, really hard. and. Uh, this person seems to like is just upset with me. All oh, that's that's how I felt. Like it, I was in this last one, and you know, it's been a long time since I've been in a relationship because I had like taken my ball and went home. Like I don't want to play this game anymore. And this guy kind of caught me off guard, and he's you know a lovely guy, everything. He's awesome, just not for me. Like that's the other thing people need to realize in relationships. It just because it didn't work out doesn't mean the person's a jerk. Now sometimes they're jerks. It just means they're just what they like and their quirks and whatever and my quirks and what I like. It just doesn't mesh. And it's okay to just say, eh. But because I had been single for so long, every time something went wrong, as a people pleaser, I'm like, well, I I need to do more. I need to do more. And it's like, no, like I'm actually doing a lot. And it's just not working. And that's okay. It's okay. And then 
when I finally pulled the trigger and just was like, I, I really can't do this. Like, this is really not good. Um, I did feel relief. I missed him, of course, because I had been with him for a while, but I kind of was like, this is better. And like, it's this- so hard to, cause we're also in an industry. I'm a, I'm a pleaser too, mm-hmm. where we have to get sort of give just by nature, yeah. emotionally, yeah, a lot of a our lot. stuff. And you know, we get followed when we go to the bathroom. Right. And I mean, no, those, those don't, they're not necessarily connected. Yeah, but, but, did, did, there, but I followed, I followed what you're, <laughs> you were saying. Yeah. But so then to, um, to have to give, uh, so much, mm-hmm. you know, at home too is, it's just, it's and if just it's tough. not reciprocated, like, yeah. I realized, and, and th- this is either going to make the right man run to me or make all men run from, run from me. I kind of want to be taken care of. Like, I want to come home and have someone go, here, baby, and like arms open, just come lay your head on my chest yeah. and let me just hold you for a while. Like I felt like I was doing a lot of the holding. Yeah. I was doing a lot of the hand holding, a lot of the, you can do it. And sometimes there's seasons in life where you are the person. I don't remember who said this, but they said relationships are a picture and a frame, right? Any given time, your 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 mate may be the, the pitcher and it's your job as the frame to press them into position and hold them there while they're on display. And then times change and then they come out of the frame and they become the frame and then you're the pitcher and their job is to come and press you in and hold you and make sure you're straight. And so that works when everybody takes turns being the pitcher in the frame. But when you're always the frame, that pitcher gets really, really heavy. And the frame can be like in our industry, the frame may be you're the plus one going to events. You're the one, you know, taking the pictures when their fans are want a picture. That's great. But in real life, it's I'm doing all the, I'm cooking all the meals. I'm washing all the dishes. I'm the one taking the, the kids to school, like whatever that is for you, whatever that framing is for you. At some point, it gets heavy. Pictures get heavy. And somebody needs to, you know, shake your arms out and whatever and, and get ready for the next time that you get to be in position. So I was starting to feel like I was framing a lot. And also now like we're in this uh, hopefully sort of this transition period but but everyone's trying to figure out transitioning from like stereotypical gender mm-hmm. roles in shifting into something else. Right. And and that's difficult for all parties involved. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you, Yvette, yes. and you don't have to answer this, okay. but you've achieved some incredible success in this industry. Yeah, well, thank you. You have, you have, <laughs> and you're amazing. Yes. Thank you. I, but I want to know, you know, because, you know, you're finding it difficult to meet someone, yeah. does does that guy need to have some level of success in their own industry? Like, when you're looking for a guy, does there need to be some kind of balance? I didn't think it mattered. You know, I grew up in East Cleveland. I grew up not with a lot, so... I'm still that girl. Like I doesn't matter that I'm on television or whatever. I'm still just a regular chick. So I thought, well, I can just get with a regular chick. It'll be fine. But then the men that I've talked to since this situation didn't work, they've said to me, like, you got to make sure that, and well, even the Bible says you have to be equally yoked. Right. I think that it's more an issue for men. I think men and, and, you know, send your letters. Cause I'd love to discuss this further, but I feel like men, some men need to be on top. And if they are not, the king of the castle in some way, either financially or because they're ruling the roost, they feel unmoored and untethered and it makes them feel insecure. And I can't change what I do for a living. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. And I can't change how much money I make. I've worked really hard and this is my reward for the hard, the 20 years of hard work. So if that is not good for you, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not someone that lords it over people. I don't walk in like, I'm I'm not that chick. I'm regular. If I can be regular and you have a problem, then that's something you need to go sit and talk to somebody about because it's not me See, doing that. Amy's like the first really successful woman. I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm going to. Mm-hmm. But that you've, that you've been she, with, right? She might be the first person that had a real job. Wow. And did it, did that, was that ever intimidating to was you? Was that by design? Was, First it, of all, was that was, by design? Did you pick girls that were less? My own insecurities got in the way and See? I, yeah, absolutely. No, I was that, that poster child for, you know, have, making sure I was. The one, the, the guy. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does it ha- like. Now, and now my wife is a federal prosecutor. So well, she, hello. she is the one. <laughs> She's very successful. She's the most powerful mm-hmm. person I know by yeah. far. She's and I, smart, and I have to beautiful. tell you, it's a huge relief. It's a huge relief because I finally feel like I'm in a balanced relationship. Wow. And it doesn't, and you're not threatened by her success at all. I encourage more and more success. Love it. See, that's healthy to me because the thing is, if it was reversed, um, when you were on top and the women you were dating were struggling or trying to find their way, they never resented you for that. No, they, well, they also wanted more and more. They were, they just wanted to, you know, 
grab onto oh, whatever. Take, yeah, they oh, were they so were, they were these takers are the gold and not diggers givers. of the these are the Right, even when I wasn't able to supply the gold. Yeah, they there's were, a they couple go, of underwear models in there. Is there <laughs> well well so. Listen, we don't have to get into my dating history. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but yes, no. It's it's. Uh, I I feel like when there is a balance in the relationship, it makes things a lot easier. Yeah, at least it was for me. But you also you were raised with a really strong mom. Oh, absolutely, right, hundred percent. She no, well, I mean she she raised the family. She didn't actually have a job, but the way she raised the family, oh, she, she was in charge. She runs the family. She was. Right. She runs the family. So she you're not afraid to. of a strong woman. You're not. You you were just. I thought I was. Yeah, I thought I was. Okay, I, and but I'm not. I love. I mean, strong women. You know, I. I Honestly, there's no, nothing beats a strong woman. I I think they're great. I think that it's if I was a man, I would want my wife to have her shit 100%. together and and be able to handle because it's the thing. Life happens to us all. You'd want to have someone in the house where if you broke a leg or got sick, she is still bringing in money. Again, picture and frame. It's now your time to be the frame and she can be the picture. I don't understand this needing someone to be less than for you to feel greater. I don't understand that. And I don't live like that. And so if I'm in a relationship and I feel that there's an attack on my self-esteem or there's an attempted attack on my self-esteem because somehow I need to be knocked down for the man to feel important, that's a sign that this is not where I'm supposed to be. Like you got to be fully healthy and whole um, to take this ride. Yeah. I feel like, um, I mean, it, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, what my partner would do do as long as it feels happy and healthy and, yeah you and want like, you would want him to be though happy in his own choices in his life because that's the real thing it's not even what they do for a living it's are they happy in their own skin have they made decisions in their life that has put them in a place where they feel like they are a productive member of society on their terms right whatever that means for them because even if you're digging ditches or working at mcdonald's on fries but you've always wanted to work at mcdonald's on fries and you are the best fry maker mcdonald's has ever had then you are walking Fucking with yes. come yes. on your head is held Absolutely. high yes. but if you're on fries and you wanted to be a, a a writer and you can't seem to get that off the ground then every single day you're only damn fries i hate come on arches, i know damn and, arches. and then and you know then it's it, it, then it's sort of like it bleeds, bleeds into, into your, your relationship yes 100 and now you, you're picking on the chick that actually likes her life i remember amanda seals uh is a great comedian um when she's on insecure she's an actress she did this post the other maybe a week ago where she said it's important that whoever you do life with it's important for them to love their life because if they don't love their life they're going to hate you for loving yours and i was like well damn that's it that is it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, we're getting to deal breakers. Are Let's you ready? I'm ready. Yvette Nicole Brown. Mm -hmm. She's on Mom with me, dear listeners. I am. And I love her. I love Anna. It's hard for me to not hug you. Oh, honey. <laughs> we, we hug, we we hug have, all the time. We hug all the time. We have this scene where I'm not supposed to. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, we have a scene where she's not supposed to hug me. She's um, fighting it. It's hard. Okay, deal breakers. Yes. He waxes his legs. Not a deal breaker. Okay. No. I like it. No, I mean, well, wait, <laughs> wait, <laughs> that might be a deal breaker. Waxing his back is not. Waxing his legs might be a deal breaker. Wait, waxing his back should be a, a necessity. A a necessity. Yeah, yes. I don't, the fur is not, I don't, doesn't work for me. Okay, but he's else. a marathon runner. Oh, then it's not a deal breaker. Right? But, but be... he's a marathon runner. Is that a deal breaker? <laughs> oh, oh, that's the next one? He's a marathon runner? No, 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 oh. no. No, I just... <laughs> Just for me, a mar marathon runner to me, it's like too much discipline. A, and yeah, that's a lot of exercise. It seems like he'd want me to exercise too. I don't gotta go in over that. to the I don't, Boston, I don't believe New York. I don't believe it. Yeah, because you gotta DC, support. You gotta give him the water. You gotta be on the side Diego. giving him the water. Yeah, that might be a deal breaker. You gotta go like run around. around you gotta like, do the little water. You're the one with the water every few yeah, kilometers. Get on my scooter. It's not good. Meet him at like the next. Yeah, thing, hit the like, marker. Throw next orange marker. juice at him or something. Put some orange rinds. <laughs> yeah, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> um, okay. So he recently quit his job on Wall Street to pursue his dream of designing pillowcases. <laughs> you know, that's not a deal breaker because it sounds really creative and I love creative guys. And I would think that if he's on Wall Street, he may have saved some money before he did that. I mean, he seems to be a practical guy. So if he's doing it, I'm reading way too much. Listen, into I, so no, what no. if he lost all his money on Wall Street and now he wants to turn into a pillowcase designer? Do I love him? <laughs> <laughs> If I love him, I'm gonna hang in there. But if I, if we just met, that's a deal breaker. Really? Yeah, because the, if he has lost all his money, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser, and I support people. I'm now supporting him. 
I know myself. Okay, but his pillowcases are gorgeous. If his pillowcases are awesome, not a deal breaker. Yeah, they're but like, like hand embroidered. Yeah, but the thing is, he lost. Like, if he lost all his money because he put it into these amazing pillowcases that he's about to sell that are awesome, not a deal breaker because now he's a dreamer who funded his dream. What if he asked you to invest in the company? Are they the most amazing pillowcases ever? They're really they're they're pretty great. They're like all pretty the great si- or they're, the most they're, they're they're all the signs of the zodiac. No, <laughs> he just lost me. They're amazing. Like if they like if he has a dream that I am like yes, rock on, hundred percent. I'm investing, hundred percent. What would be your dream pillowcase? <laughs> no, no, like I just I was thinking embroidery. Uh, yeah, a yeah. Kid take cloth. Yeah, I don't listen, know. It's like uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, on your third date, he says to you, he he comes over to your place to pick you up, yeah. and he says, "Sugar tits? Do you want Chinese or tied a nine? Sugar tits? Oh, I don't know. That's rough. <laughs> that sugar tits is a little rough. <laughs> what are my choices in the food too? Because that might be rough too. I'm Ch- not a Chinese, big, <laughs> Chinese or Thai. I'm not a big Thai person, so he lost me. That's two out of three. I'm not a fan of. But you like Chinese? I do like Chinese, but I do not like sugar tits. <laughs> sugar tits. Mm-mm. That's, a, that's like how? What would you say? I would say precious. <laughs> Pumpkin dumpling. Yeah, babe. Yeah, sugar tits. I don't know. Okay, but what if you you really like the guy? The first two dates were amazing. The and then third he just, date, and then he just, just pulls sugar tits out yeah, of his ass? Yeah, Um. Yeah, babe. Yeah? How about babe? <laughs> you want to just call me babe? Or how about just sugar? It's just like right now. It's like your tits are like yeah, a little bit out. And then they, oh, yeah, I'm going to go God. cover those suckers up because oh, you I'm apparently sorry. cannot like, control. Yeah, I'm a little, little offended with sugar tits babe oh, right. let's just be babe right. we'll be babe cool. and let's have chinese that's cool that's, that's cool. it that's it uh, <laughs> he's a little slacker isn't he it's just hey babe it's cool babe, babe. it's cool <laughs> uh so wait can i not say uh something like twat around you um well sir see now it's now he's sir now he's no longer babe he's sir now you're not going to chinese now we're not even getting chinese now uh, we're yeah now it's i know deal breaker. Has, it's become a deal listen, breaker. but this is your third date you went on two dates i know but then. he showed it I, I gotta tell a horror story about a date soon after this too but go on well let's just say he you know he says i used to call my mom sugar tits and so it is totally like, a deal breaker <laughs> it's totally totally a deal breaker we're done we're done sir Okay. And go to therapy. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> What's my, this date? My, my lift is... Huh? Uh, you said you had a hard date? I had a date recently, you guys, because I'm, I'm on um, online dating now. Are you, are you on Raya? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am on Raya just because everyone said I'm supposed to be on Raya. I don't get it. Like, I don't... First of all, everybody's on Raya. Like, every... I saw so many people that I know on Raya. It's ridiculous. This is a every, celebrity dating app. Every guy I have ever seen on television is on raya no one's happy and married or maybe they're nobody's happy and married a lot of people are on raya so i am on it but i don't go on it but no i'm using like bumble and i think i'm on match and one other one but went out with this guy and the first thing he said when i when he came in he was like yeah i put 30 minutes in my meter and i in hindsight i realized that should have been it that should have been like well sir i don't want to keep you you know, enjoy your afternoon. And then he was like, well, I mean, do you want to eat? Cause I already ate. And I'm like, well, it's a lunch date. So I kind of did want to eat. I, that was the plan. And then the last thing, so we didn't eat, we just drank tea and the guy, the waiter comes by and goes, Hey, don't worry about it. Tea's on me. You know, you guys just enjoy your afternoon. And I'm like, well, you know, before you go, before you close the, the kitchen for dinner, can I just, I just want to get this appetizer, $5 appetizer, everybody, $5 appetizer. The bill came. And he put it, the guy put it between us. Cause he could tell this something's happening. I ain't going to give it to him and put it in the middle. And he did not pick up the five. It was a five dollar and forty six cent check. He did not pick it up. So it sat on the table for like five minutes. And then finally, I pick it up and he goes, "Well, you know, I'll put the tip down because you know I didn't eat anything." And I was like, "Yes, yeah, uh, five. He said, "Well, I got. I wouldn't put four on the table." And I was like, "Okay, you go ahead and hit that tip." It's, it felt so so rude that it was that he was like testing you. You think he was testing me? I do. I think it was a weird thing, like I don't know. I, when like someone's like, "Oh, you know, like you're shorter in person." Like, oh, what do they you, call that? They call it a negging. Is it negging? Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I don't. That was a, that like was a, a little bit of a game. Neg. Yeah, he, it was a full on, and I, I was not like, why do you open with a put thirty minutes? Like, ah, yeah, I, that right there was enough. That, that, that should have been. That should have said no, thank you, sir. Like, it was so nice to meet you. I don't want to keep you. You apparently seem to be in a hurry, and you've already eaten. So there's no reason for us to continue. You've eaten and, you know, but the thing about the five not picking up the check is he had already bragged about 
wanting to um, donate to this or invest in this app. Like I was going to put two hundred fifty thousand dollars in this app, and see, that's what I'm saying. So he is that. Who knows that, that that's the truth, though? No, but he's trying to impress you and insult you at the same time, which is totally fucked up. Yeah, but it's a game that some dudes play. I was not impressed. I was insulted, and I'm good. Like he's a he's a he's a. I could see myself being friends with him, but as far as like that's really. Just not, no, no, no. I don't no, want no, him. No, hear me I out. Don't, like, I don't want. I, <laughs> hear me out. Like, I don't necessarily want to be friends with him, but I'm saying I could see if he was just nagging and he actually is a really nice guy, then I could see just, okay, we can be friendly. But when I just talked about, like, I want a man that when I come home, he's he's a warm place for me to land, right? And so if this guy can't even buy a $5 bow, it's a little bow, a little bun, a little bows, crab bow. Yeah, I love bows. bows. are amazing. a little crab bow. I can't get a crab bow. <laughs> I want the crab bow. <laughs> And I'm also gonna have to bill you for the two dollars, uh, my, my two dollar meter. <laughs> meter. Did he have to go back and put more coins he, in the meter? He didn't. He he texted me later and said he didn't get a ticket. I was like, good for you, <laughs> good for you, sir. That was a text message. That was the text message I got. Uh, yo, yo, I didn't get it. Great. I'm so happy you didn't get a. I was sitting here wondering, did he get a ticket? This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Intuit, powering products like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, and Credit Karma. Intuit works for what you work for, and it was only recently that I found out they were working for me. I've been using QuickBooks for years and more recently began using Mint, which is an easy way to create monthly budgets. It was a bit surprising to realize how much I could save by learning how to make coffee. With Intuit, Artificial intelligence can predict your future cash flow, recognize a misplaced digit in an account or routing number, and even connect users with live experts who can assist with navigating life changes or help with unique tax situations. Everything is automatically organized as you track your personal or business expenses by scanning receipts, invoices, and other financial documents, while smart budgeting tools let you know before you overspend. Innovative features like these make managing your finances simple, but as you probably already knew, innovation is at the core of everything Intuit does. Discover how Intuit's products can help you see what's possible at Intuit.com. That's I-N-T-U-I-T dot com. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Best Fiends. We all know there really is only one match three style game worth playing. It's the one with an actual storyline, cool collectible characters, and nonstop action packed adventure. It's the one with literally thousands of challenging puzzles to solve. And yes, I'm using the word literally correctly. Of course, I'm talking about best fiends. You meet your best fiends early in their careers. They don't have much experience, but they have heart. I recognized a little piece of myself in each of them. And so I began to assemble the perfect team. I watched them grow as we solved puzzle after puzzle, working hard and playing hard. Today, my best fiends are ready to go anytime and anywhere. I'm really proud of what they have become. With new challenges and levels added all the time, there's never a boring moment. So download Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. This is a segment called yeah. What's Your Next Move? It used move? to be called How Would You Proceed? We changed the name. <laughs> What's Your Next Move? Okay. Okay, you are cast as Beyonce's sister in okay. her new romantic comedy, Hurricane of Love. <laughs> Although it's spelled here as Hurricane of <laughs> Love. Because sometimes you can. Because you can. <laughs> um, it's Twister meets the wedding planner mm. on the first day of filming her assistant Kayla comes up to you and says Beyonce really wants to bond with you oh. um, so what she would love is like at the end of the day if you don't mind like because she wants you to get to know her like through her personal space yes if you wouldn't mind like sort of like cleaning up her trailer a little bit and <laughs> um, and then <laughs> Also, I know that you your call is a lot earlier than hers. Yes, it is. So if you wouldn't mind like ordering an egg white omelet for her. When I get in. When you so get in. When she gets in, it's ready yeah, for Yeah, and it just need for you to make sure that it's hot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and she likes is, asparagus tips, white ones. Yeah. Give me that, um, give me that full order, Kayla. Prosciutto. What's that full? Yeah. Yeah. But she really loves you. She's so excited for this project. Oh, Kayla. 
What's my next move? Yeah. My next move is Kayla. Yeah. I'm from Cleveland. Oh, where's that? Uh, in Ohio. Um, where's I'm that? There, it's, it's, it's middle of the, the country. Don't worry about it. But I'm really aware that the things you just asked me to do for yeah. Beyonce are things that I'm pretty sure Beyonce asked you to do for her. No. And I'm pretty sure she's no. also paying you to do them. No. So what I'm going to do no. is I am not going to clean her space and I am not going to order her omelet. Um, okay, but it, I'm going to have to tell her. Well, no, actually, you don't have to because I'm going to go tell her. I'm about to go tell her now that that's what you tried to do. Now, yeah, Kayla, but you know Kayla, she's hungry. Kayla, I she wish you I wish you the best in life and the next job that you will have after this one. But I will not be doing what, but what you, you asked me to do. you don't understand. Stand. I have to ride with her every morning and every evening. I know. So you're lucky because Beyonce's awesome. You're lucky because you got cast as her sister. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. But the one thing I'm pretty sure of is I'm not going to lose this job because I didn't clean her trailer, but you might. So I think that you probably want to go and tidy up that sucker. Okay, listen, I have to ride in with her every day. Yes. And she needs what she needs. She does. And and guess what? She hired you to provide those needs. Okay. Kayla. Do you want to be close to her or not? Um, I want only be, I one be, way to be close I to her. Be and close that is to her. Okay. I want to be close to her in that scene. And I'm going to be close to her because the script is written. And as it's written, I'm her sister. So the things that I say to her are already very loving. Okay. But so I just want you to know that I also auditioned. And did I, you? Oh, to play the sister? Yeah. And I did really well. Did you get it? I didn't get it. <laughs> But, but I knew that I was really close. Uh, that's, you know, what? listen, and you know what else you're close to losing this job if you don't clean this trailer. So I am going to support you. Oh, my God. In doing that. You are so underestimating my <laughs> friendship with Beyonce. I yes. I am. Yeah. They're renewing their vows soon. They and are. guess what? What, Kayla? I get to be the maid of honor. You do. <laughs> yeah. You do. Does Kelly Solange and Michelle know about this? Yeah. They do? Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a few maid of honors. Oh, there's a few. Is but it so, okay. I'm just saying if that in this situation, Kayla. everyone has to like pull their weight. Kayla. Because she's really, Kayla. really busy. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was amazing. It was fun. Yeah. You held your ground. I had to help I had to hold Well, my Kayla's pretty fucking awful. She is, but she's pretty insistent too. Almost caved. <laughs> because I would get to get in there and see what Beyonce's doing. I get in the room and you know, here's some see, new like music. a random self help book. Yep, here's some new music before it comes out. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, um, okay, we're gonna calls. do calls. Do calls. calls. Yeah, we're gonna Yay. talk to Olivia first, and Olivia is in Washington. She's actually in Everett, Anna. I'm from Washington, so mm-hmm. here's what we do. Okay, we um we give advice to strangers. Hello. Hey, Olivia. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you today? I'm doing really well. I'm going to introduce you to Anna and Hi, Yvette. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Anna. Hi, Olivia. It's Yvette Nicole Brown. How are you, hon? Oh, hi, Yvette. How hi. are you? I'm good, pumpkin. <laughs> I'm exciting. Olivia, tell us what's going on with your husband and all the feelings that you've been having, and we're going to try and help you. Okay, really appreciate your guys' time. I'm married. We've been together about six years. We have a, a beautiful toddler together. And for all intents and purposes, life is really good. It's a happy marriage. Um, we are very different people. Um, we've found a way to make our differences work, but we do have a lot of different hobbies and that kind of thing. Um, so with that being the background, there was a guy in my early 20s who I thought was going to be that guy. We were together for about five years. We were really good friends and we had a lot in common. And I think in the end, we were better friends than we were in a romantic relationship. Um, It did take kind of a while for the relationship to finally end, but it did. And we've both moved on to separate productive lives. And we do occasionally keep in touch for big life events, maybe once or twice a year, you know, something through social media. We don't call each other. We don't meet in person, but he's kind of that guy who's always lingered in the back of my mind and made me wonder if we'd have met later on in life, you know, would things have been different? And I know Anna is not a fan of closure. And um, it's funny because I don't really know that I am either, but I can't help but wonder, are these feelings normal? They make me feel very guilty. You know, I have a wonderful husband. I love him. I would never disrespect him. I wouldn't even meet up with my ex for coffee per se. Um, But are, you know, is it normal to kind of wonder what if, or maybe have these kind of feelings of could something else have been 
different for you. Oh, Olivia. I, I don't even know that I would want to get together with this guy again or anything like that, but I just don't know if, if I'm normal. <laughs> uh, Olivia, I have so many thoughts. One is that, yes, it is, it is very, very normal. And you're at a particularly vulnerable time in life because you have uh, a toddler. And that does change thing. It's, it's things so much, it, you know, it sort of normalizes and sort of regulates your life in a less exciting way. And so <laughs> it's, so it's, it's easy to romanticize, um, previous relationships. And, and also it is a time in your life. My son is now, he's about to turn six, but you know, there's that chunk of time when it's so difficult to sort of straddle you know motherhood and and being a wife and work and whatever that that you sort of yearn for some degree of excitement yeah like the first part of your question yes it is completely normal i commend you for not acting on anything um let me ask you this though is your friend being kind of aggressive with you i mean not not like overtly aggressive but is he is he in a relationship uh, I think he's been kind of off and on with the same girl since he and I broke up years ago. So I think he's in a relationship. I have, I don't really know how happy it is. We don't discuss her. You know, it's our, our conversations are really just like, hey, I, I heard you moved. Congratulations. Happy birthday. It's once or twice a year. They're nothing. They're nothing really even that in depth. It's more just like, hey, glad you're doing well. Well, you got to know that when it's at that level that they can't help but look amazing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. <laughs> there's, there, it's really a blank slate. It's the mental image you have of him, how he looked, how he smelled, whatever back then, and then just void. It's happy birthday, love that you have a new house. Whereas with your husband, there's day to day ups and downs in life, and then there's a kid and there's your job. So that entire picture is painted. Whereas with this guy, it's kind of a blank canvas with some pretty colors sitting there waiting. And so it's easy to think that if you started to paint, it would be a masterpiece, but you don't really know that. And I'm saying this from experience because I, my high school boyfriend and I talk every year on our birthdays. When I read that in, in your thing, I, I heard that. I was like, oh, my God. Um, and and it's beautiful because I can think about all the childhood dreams I had for him and what we were going to be. But he's married with two kids. And, you know, and I know the story. I've talked to him every year on my birthday for years now. So I know the story of who he's become. And he has not become someone that I could be with now. You know, and so when I hear his voice, I can still remember the beauty of him at 17 or 20 or throughout the years. But at this age, he's not my guy. And so I'm saying this to you. There's so many people that have unhappy marriages, so many people that have husbands that don't appreciate them and and difficult situations at home. You don't have that. You don't even know right now how blessed you are to have a loving relationship with your husband. I promise you, whatever it would be with that guy, it would not trump what you already have. I promise. What's funny is if if my husband and I were to separate tomorrow, I don't even think I would call this guy because I am a firm believer that you have people in your life and things end for a reason. And I don't, I don't think that it would necessarily be better. And I don't even necessarily know why I have these feelings, but they're just there. Um, yeah. So there's there's not a part of me that wants to leave. <laughs> do, do you have really specific? Like mem- because you know we talk a lot about on the podcast how memory sort of sharpens itself into mm-hmm. like really positive or really negative. Yeah. But do you have like because especially at that age, like teens and twenties, um, at least for me, I was so self absorbed. So now when I look back, I remember like having like the intensity of emotion, mm-hmm. um, but I don't remember like the specifics necessarily of somebody that that I loved. Mm -hmm. I remember feeling like grateful for being in love and the rush and the excitement, but I don't really remember, um, sort of the commonality or like where we would possibly be now because it's, it is, and should be a time of, of selfishness to a degree. Mm -hmm. Maybe selfishness is, yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't know, Olivia, if you are in, here's, here's my, (gasps) Here's my practical advice. <laughs> I don't know if you and your husband are in the position to go away for for a little vacation or um, or do something where we, you guys... We actually own a business together and mm-hmm. it does make it hard to take yeah. vacations. We actually just had to cancel a vacation. <laughs> so uh, we are planning another one. And I think it would definitely benefit us to get 
some alone time where we're not mom or dad or boss. Um, you know, so that's definitely in the works. I mean, it's, it's hard when you spend a lot of time with your partner, you know, a lot of the intimacy goes away because when you get home and sit down, there's not, there's not a lot left to talk about because you have talked to all. Well, why not just like a staycation, like just go to like a holiday inn for on a, for a weekend or for a night. I know know a good one in Everett. Yeah. See, I do. And just get away. And they just offer do... a variety of pillow softness. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some, some great stuff softness. up that way. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that's actually a really good idea to see if you'd be, you know, down to get a babysitter and just yeah. go to a nice dinner and go see a movie and go to a place that's not our home and we don't have to pick our towels up off the floor. Right. And, the, know? and also the, the other thing, Olivia, too, to clock is, um, and we haven't talked too much about this and I don't know how, how much time we have to, but... I, I don't know um, this guy's motivations. Like if he's sort of dating this girl off and on and he's like kind of seeking you out, Mike, not to gender stereotype, but you know, men usually don't seek out. uh, Platonic friendships. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with married women. I don't think he likes to be alone. I don't, from what I know about him and the person he's with, um, I don't think it's been the healthiest relationship, but I don't know if he's had better options per se. I mean, with he and I, it probably should have ended before it did just based on his feelings of clearly wanting to try something else. I was like his first real girlfriend. So for me, you know, I dated him. He wasn't happy with you is what you're saying? Um, I I think that because we had gotten together when we were so young, I think he kind of needed to see what else was out there. And I just think it took him a really long time to cut the cord because I'm, I'm a fixer and I want to make this work. And, you know, I think it took him a long time to finally, you know, I, I basically found out that he was seeing this girl that he's still with right. Um, right. when, you know, he and I were still well, listen, kind of off and well, on. Well, listen, well, there you go right there. Like, yeah, I, that he's not. No, like he, if he's someone that couldn't even commit to you when he had you then he's obviously right. not a viable option in any way, even with these little, you know, yearly phone calls, cut the cord. Yeah. Cause what he is, is he's under glass right now. And if you ever were to have some problems with your husband, the fact that you're keeping this lingering thing, you know, kind of in the, in the room, if something ever did happen with your husband, he is who you would go to. So he's just a, an affair waiting to happen. So if I were you, I would just let that go and just concentrate on the beautiful thing you have at home. Any dalliance with this dude, and I totally understand your um, desire for like, you know, just more excitement, excitement. and interest and, and uh, you know, and especially if you guys are, you and your husband are running a business together, that is, that's a lot and a young this kid and, but, but yeah, this, this dude is, uh, um, I bet he's uh, handsome and charming. Is he I, handsome and charming? Um, yes. He's, he's I'm, very I'm handsome. Gonna, I'm going to make definitely. He can definitely put on a show. I'm going to make this. But my husband, like, he's a he's a straight nine though, so I have nothing to complain about. I'm like, going to make. I'm going to make this. He looks, especially for his age. I'm going to make this <laughs> this suggestion, and I've never made this suggestion before, so this is not like my go to suggestion. I think you and your husband should try uh-huh. some role playing. I think that you should oh, meet okay. at a, meet at a Holiday Inn, drive separately. He should be at the bar. You Ooh, should be at the bar. I like this. And you should I come like in oh, and it. change your names and just oh, be, be hot strangers <laughs> meeting at a Holiday Inn and go ravage each other. That's what yeah. I think should happen because you see each other every day. You talk to each other every day and, and it's becoming a little stale. And so you need to be reminded of what you thought was great about each other. Make up some wild story. You're in town for the night. You're a stewardess and whatever. And and meet each other at the hotel and literally arrive separately. So hey, it's not, what's you know. Up? Yeah, Is like, hey. Hi, what's I'm, up? I'm, I'm Jed. I'm Sheila. I'm just in town for the night. You know what I mean? Literally, I don't, <laughs> oh we don't want to get rude and gross or whatever. But yes, we do. You know, well, Anna does. I am. De- I don't want to do that to you. But I think that you should tell him and, so just, and just say, you know, babe, we see each other every day at work. We're at home together all the time. We've got the baby. Let's go and be adventurous for a weekend. Let's be random people. And you know what? Have fun. Be a different person every time y'all wake up. Like wear just, a dress, but don't wear panties. Yeah, go on, girl, go on. And it's your husband. The marriage bed is oh undefiled. God. Go have a good time with your husband and pretend to be somebody else. We no. need to say bye to her now, actually. Yeah, but hey, but Olivia, um, hey, thanks so much for the call. Keep us posted. Uh, this guy does not, he, he does not sound, not uh, yeah, yeah. I think that there's there's no happy ending. Uh, that, and, yeah. and unfortunately, I think it means a total cutoff. Yeah. He's just not going to do anything I appreciate anything the perspective, and I think, I think you know, you guys are right. It's probably better just to, you know, stop the happy birthdays and, 
you know, because there really, there really wasn't anything there. And, and like I said, I have no intention of ever being back with that person. Right, and I am yeah. in a happy marriage. So Let it go. why, why clutter up these feelings? And you but, know what, um, Olivia, one last I'm, thought too. You are one of the few people that gets sort of the satisfaction, I think, of a little bit of a reach out mm-hmm. um, from an ex. Yeah. Not too many people get it. So count that as a, as a win. <laughs> yep. And then like fucking dump his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Olivia. Thank Thanks, yeah. Olivia. Thank you. I you love guys you. Have a great day. Thank you, you so too, much. Honey. Oh, right. I hope so she does have Let's get to sex. the last call. I love that idea. That and was good they advice. Never, I love good that advice. Because she said it was idea. a little stale. You gotta, I'm telling you, I've never given anybody advice like that before, but I thought it was apropos. We're going to call Michelle next. And Michelle, she's here in LA and she's 24. Hello? Hey, Michelle. It's Sim. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really well. Anna, say hi to Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Anna. Hey, thanks for doing this. I'm here with Yvette Nicole Brown. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good, Pumpkin. Nice to hear your voice. So, Michelle, we had a similar <laughs> situation on the episode with uh, Stephen Amell and Colton Haynes, and um, they they had wranglers that were pulling them away. So we didn't really get to finish that call, but this but your call is similar. So I was hoping we can devote a little bit more time to this. Uh, tell us what is going on with you. Yeah. So one of my best friends uh, from high school. We've known each other now for the last eight years. Um, he was really close friends with my boyfriend at the time. Um, and then both of us kind of ended ties with him and the two of us remained friends. Um, so all throughout high school, we were friends and all of our friends kind of teased us a bit and said that he was in love with me. Of course, I didn't really believe that because it seemed ridiculous at the time. He never said anything. We never had any conversation like that of the sort. It was always super friendly Um, all throughout college, we stayed in touch. Um, and then we both ended up studying abroad at the same time. So we both, both visit each other abroad. And that was actually the last time we saw each other in person. Um, so that was about four years ago. Um, and he just recently came to visit me. Um, this was about three weeks ago and all of my friends in LA started telling me that they felt that he was looking at me in a way where they felt that he might be in love with me again, I thought was ridiculous, but now these were new people who didn't really know him before who were telling me that they really felt strongly that he had feelings for me. Um, and then the first night that he was in LA, he kind of told me something alluding to the fact that he had feelings for me, but never outright said anything. Um, and I'm totally a no conflict type of person. And I kind of just shrugged it off a little bit. Um, but now I guess my question is, is if I could continue to let it go and kind of shrug it off as I always have, or if I should actually talk to him about this and kind of make it clear that if he does feel that way, that I don't feel that way. So you don't have any feelings towards him? I No, I don't. So when he came out to visit, was it uh, to visit you specifically and did he stay with you? Um, he did stay with me. He didn't make it seem as though he was visiting just to see me he'd kind of expressed wanting to come out to LA for a really long time like for the last two years since I've lived here he's always said that he's really wanted to come and visit LA um, and I'm the only person he knows out here so he asked if he could stay with me um, but at the time he hadn't expressed that it was for me he had just expressed um, that he wanted to come visit LA like did he give a professional reason for Or just like, hey, I'm coming to L.A. Yeah. Yeah. He just kind of had time off of work in between jobs and had time to go on a couple of trips. And one of the trips he wanted to go on was L.A. Well, oh, it's a tough one because because he hasn't put you in a position where he's forced your hand. This is a little bit different than the uh, Stephen. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, he hasn't outright said anything, but he did kind of. I mean, he really heavily alluded to it. What did he kind of say? You said he kind of said something. What did he kind of say to you? Yeah. So he basically told me that night that he really came out to L.A. to see me. And when he visited me abroad, he was coming to see me, not the city. Um, And he also told me that he dated one of our friends that um, from high school and that she confronted him one night when she was out drinking and said, you know, if Michelle 
texted you right now and said that she wanted to be with you, would you dump me? And he said, yes. Oh, he likes you. Um, <laughs> is, are, are you in a relationship? <laughs> are you in a relationship, Michelle? <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. You just, and, and is he in a relationship? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No. How often? Well, first of all, I kind of want to know what city, if you don't mind, you're, st- you study your abroad and i just want to know how <laughs> far he to know how he traveled do you travel uh-huh. to like um it wasn't that far no i was studying in london and he was in belgium so it was like a two-hour train ride okay and it will and how often does he reach out to you how frequently i mean i'm typically not the best at staying in touch but we at least touch base like every month or two just checking in and seeing how we were doing um so frequently over the last four years but not like a it's not like a daily or weekly thing oh, okay this is my thought about it and I'm, I'm very old so just just put the grain of salt <laughs> um i believe that if a man wants you it is his job to let you know that he wants you yeah, okay right so all of this hinting around <laughs> and stuff that he's doing that's yeah, really sweet ridiculous. sweet and precious and all that but he has not stepped up to you and said I would like to date you. I like you. Now, maybe he's afraid. Maybe he senses that you don't like him back, all that. But that's his stuff he has to work through. You um, have nothing to do in this. You, he's done nothing. He's not making you feel uncomfortable. He's not forcing himself on you. He's not sending you like love letters going, oh, my God, please love me. He's literally just kind of hinting around to see if you'll take the bait. You never have to take the bait. And if he never speaks up and says, I love you, I want to be with you. You just never have to deal with it. This is these are his feelings he has to work through. Now, be respectful of him and loving of him because he's your friend and make sure that you don't ever make him feel uh dumb or bad for loving you. That's the only thing you have to do is be respectful of him because he is not he may not be your mate, but he's somebody's mate and you don't want to send all you don't want to destroy him so he's going out wounded, hurting the next girl he has a crush on. So you need to be decent with him and love him and be kind as a friend, but you don't have to do anything else but that. That's right. And I also think that uh don't feel guilty about like keeping a little bit of distance. Like if he texts you Yeah, I was gonna say I start to feel guilty. Yeah, don't, 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 don't. don't. I mean, I am the queen of not getting back to anybody in my life. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but so, so I think next time he texts you, like, start to establish the, the, the boundary mm-hmm. and, and, and like, and, you know, wait, wait a few days, say like, oh, whatever, nice to hear from you. How do you do that? How do you establish boundaries without coming off as a dick? Let's say he texts something like, what's up? Like, how's LA? Then Michelle waits like two or three so, days, yeah, yeah. and just hopefully eventually men says, could like, sorry, yeah, and, sorry, I just got this. Uh, LA is great, but working like, so much, I just missed this. Text. Yeah, it's it, yeah, or like it, it's hot. Uh, how are you? Yeah, uh, and but just continue to prep, like make the increments of distance longer and longer, because even if you may want to be his friend. Um, that's very difficult for a man of that's his in love age. With, yeah, and that's in love. And with that's you, in love with you. you. That's it's impossible, essentially. And so I think that you you have to, and, and unless he like drunkenly calls you one night, and uh, which I would not pick up, but you know whatever. <laughs> if, if he's like, I love you so much, or makes some kind of grand mm-hmm. dramatic gesture, um, you don't have to put yourself in a position where you're proactively rejecting him, right? Um, I wouldn't advise having him like stay with you again right. or, you know, because I, I think and Michelle, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that like your idea of an idealistic uh, platonic relationship with him, it's, it's just not possible right. at this point. So yeah, I, th- and, and I don't want you to have to be in a position where you're like, I don't like you, but let's be friends. And because this guy's going to get crushed. Okay, it's only a matter of time. All right. So he's going to at some point <laughs> no, send but a text message. Maybe not. Maybe not. But he will. He texts he, once I don't think he's going to keep month. it inside. But I don't well, think no, no, no. This is the thing. This him. is the other thing, too, Michelle, you can do. You need to de adorable yourself. <laughs> okay? Because apparently there's something about you that's amazing, and that's great. But you know, you know what you do or what you say that's just super cute or just adorable. I do. Don't, look look I, at me. Think that Anna's adorable. She's adorable in me so right adorable. now. She's so adorable. And, and, you know, so don't do any of that with him. It doesn't mean be cold or mean. It just means the the quirkiness or the silliness or the cuteness, whatever you have that is uniquely your thing as a woman. And we all have something. Yeah. And we know how to turn it on when we like a guy. You know how you get when you like a guy? 
Um, and I'm not saying that you've ever done that to him. He just likes you, but make sure that when you're talking to him, you make sure you turn that down. So you're almost a, is a dude with him. So don't be rude, but just don't be adorable. Yeah. Like, uh, like it's hot. What's up with you? Yeah. Like how you doing instead of like, Oh my God, it's so great to hear you. And it's just like, Hey, it's good. It's cool. What's up with you? Yeah. And so, so he's like, wow, she doesn't sound like, you know, you're not the person that he fell in love with just a little bit. Turn it down just a little. Can I ask a question to you both? Yeah. Okay. So what if he writes this long text message professing his love how long should she wait to answer it? And when she does answer it, what should she say? Or should she call him back and let him know? Oh, what no, no. At says. least at least a day. He'll be in a very emotional place. I'm different. Like, I feel like you should re- you should hit it immediately. My thought is you don't, at first, do no harm. That's what I always think about. You don't want to destroy this guy. So I don't know that there's a way that you can say it that will not destroy him. But it has to start with, oh, my God, John or Chad or whatever. I am so flattered. Like I, there's been times in our friendship where I was like, oh my God, he's so great. I, I, it would be, you know, you're great. I just, where I am in my life, I live in LA and I, I'm, I'm trying to find myself. I'm 24. I'm trying to find myself. I just don't feel that this is the right time for us to even go down that road. Um, I think you're wonderful. And I would totally understand if you don't want to talk to me anymore because you do like me in that way, but I'm just not there right now. You know, and then that I don't know if the right now helps though, because that might make him think, I well, I just need to wait a while, and she that, will. That's there. why I think it has to be sort of carefully constructed. But Michelle, you don't. This is a whole different conversation. You don't feel any like like danger from him. He's not stalking you. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Just occurred to me to maybe ask an that's important good, question. That's a good question to ask. I, <laughs> no. I agree. That's I mean, a good question to ask. Does know where you live? <laughs> yeah, he's been there. But uh, no, I think um, I think if he does make a declaration of love, I think uh, uh, my advice would be to let it, it well, breathe. Well, because I, that usually that that kind of thing, if especially if he's in Chicago, happens at like two thirty in the morning. Yeah, right. And After some liquid it, courage. It needs, yeah, it needs a minute. Um, but uh, I still think he's going to do it. I think you might be right. I, I think, think you will. Right. I think I think he's going to keep hinting until you give in, and if you never give in, he'll never say anything. Yeah, and uh, you know who knows. Um, who- if he made a bold gesture and like and kissed you, or if the timing was right, whatever it was, would you go for a kiss? Would you try it out? Would you Would you test the waters? Um, that's actually happened once. Would you, um, would you, how did like you just? Why are we just ago? finding out now that he did that? <laughs> no, no, I know, I know, no, but he. It, it just nothing happened. It was super quick. Nothing happened. We never talked about it, and that was five years ago. Mm. Yeah, I think. Um, I think he's reaching I, and hoping. He doesn't. Think can he I just ask shot. one more question? Why don't you like him? What is it about him that you don't like? You know, I mean, he's such a great guy. He's so nice, but I've just known him for so long that I there's just certain traits in him that I know are not compatible with me, and I just I can't see it. Um, well, listen, I, I think, uh, I think a strategy of, of like distance, you know what I mean? Like if he, when he, when he texts, just don't, don't immediately reply. And then you can slowly like unhinge the, this the friendship's train. over, right? This friendship is pretty much over. Yeah. But Seems it, like how it, much of a friendship is it though? Because it feels like he's kind of just hanging around trying to get her. Like it doesn't seem like there's a real friendship aside from him trying to woo you. Am I wrong? It may be a really great place uh, well, to I stay did- in LA. <laughs> I didn't think so, but I mean, he's always been incredibly nice and super supportive, but maybe that, I mean, I never thought that that was for any other reason. Oh, well, I don't want to take that away from you though. Like he might, he might really be your great friend. And the reason he fell in love with you is because he knows you really well, you know? And that's the other thing I wanted to say. If he does make the great declaration, you've already said that there's qualities in him that you know would not be compatible. You guys are actually friends. So you can say, now, you know, you, you sleep with your socks off and you know that I, that drives me crazy. So, you know, we would not work. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have, you have the, the information that you would need to explain to him why it's not a good fit. Even if, but I don't even know if that's necessary, but I do think yeah. that we're, we uh, like are in this culture of, of uh, like as women, especially like being polite all know, the time so all and the kind time. and ignoring kind of our gut. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and you know, and I think as you get older, that's, um, you, that's that you know your your edges start to sharpen no listen that's listen i started but, with i'm old so i get it but i'm saying if you can do it kindly yes yeah yeah and if he's yeah. not unkind there's no reason to be unkind if he's not unkind now if he comes crazy and you go and go crazy back 
I don't want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shame but I, I think that you you don't need the only thing that you I, I think you don't need to be proactive in saying no that agreed. that you don't care for him in the way that he cares for you. But I would recommend, um, you know, not not reaching out to him when he does reach out to you. Um, just taking a minute, yep. uh, doing what Yvette said, and and keeping your texts really brief mm-hmm. and short, and. Uh, and just making sure that without, you know, without hurting him, that he's getting the message that... Mm-hmm. Just don't take you know. it away. And if anything dramatic happens, Send you know, me an please, email. Like, Let us know. And also, you know, call, obviously <laughs> well, call damn. your parents or who, who, somebody in your life that you trust that will, will get back to you uh, immediately because I take at least four months. <laughs> 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 hey, Michelle, thanks so much. Thank you, Michelle. I hope we helped in some way. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, this actually is really helpful. I hate confrontation, so I'm kind of glad you're on the same page. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to do it. Yeah, you, you don't have to do it. That's right. That's right. All right. I love you. Bye. Love you. Thank Bye, you honey. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. I thought she I was, was sweet. I really thought I was the only one that you called pumpkin. <laughs> oh, honey. You, oh, no, it's fine. I just feel rejected. It's just when I feel the love in my heart is what comes out. You want to be pumpkin doodle? I, Okay, you be pumpkin yeah, doodle. Yeah. It's yours. You be pumpkin doodle. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Yvette, thank you so much. I had so much fun. This was You're awesome. Amazing. Can you, will you please come back? Of yeah. Course. Are you kidding? I, listen, yes. I've been dying for this invitation. I definitely will come back. Thank you so much. I, I love it. seeing you. I'm, I love getting to act with you, and I love it that you're here sitting on my couch. Oh, and... honey. She has a really nice dressing room, you guys. You think? It's really lovely. Yes. Listen, you, you want to come out and see what I'm in? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I kicked the director out of here? Did you? Sweet was. You should. You're out of Paris. I wanted enjoy, the window. Get the window. Enjoy the court. She's got a nice little, a little seat in area with a little hassock. What is it called? Ottoman? I don't know. I actually, it's not quite true. There was a director transition. And ah. so I was like, oh, so that dressing room's open. Is it available? Right, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go uh, scoot light. down there then. Get a little natural light. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for you having too, me. listeners. We love you. Love Bye, you. guys. Good night. She's